Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we pay special tribute to Colonel Roger S. Jerome on the occasion of his promotion to the rank of Brigadier General. The host for today's ceremony is Lieutenant General Talita Crossman, Director of the Defense Health Agency. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the scene of our national anthem by Master Kirill French, followed by the invocation given by Chaplain Karen Meeker. As I lift a prayer for our ceremony today, let us pray. God, there are times in life when it can be almost too much to bear, but you are with us to strengthen us and encourage us to keep going. When we cannot keep going, you carry us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for seeing the Giraud family through such a season. It makes this happy occasion and all the more precious. And so with humble gratitude, we give our heartfelt thanks and praise. Continue to have your hand of favor upon General Giroux and Kelly and Maddie. May they keep in stride to contribute in meaningful ways to the Army and the nation. Bless the whole extended family as their family business has been about decorated service and sacrifice in uniform for generations. May all of us gathered here today be inspired by their legacy. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we are reminded that our freedom as Americans and our freedom as people of faith has been paid in blood. Grant that we, O oh God, who yet remain among the living, be so committed to giving our lives for others. I pray in your holy name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Chaplain Meeker, thank you for those inspirational words. And ladies and gentlemen, let's please give a round of applause to Master uh, Hero French for that rendition of the National Anthem. Call my friend Ryan Seacrest and see if we can get him on American Idol. <laughs> We'd like to extend a special welcome to our distinguished guest, 
uh, Dr. Andrew Centennial, Exec Executive Director, Acquisitions Technology and Logistics, Department of Veteran Affairs. Colonel Giroux is joined today by his wife, Kelly, his daughter, Madeline, his brother, Mr. Ed Giroux, his mother-in-law, Ms. Judy Hannon, his cousin, Lieutenant Colonel Retired John Wink and his spouse, Deborah, and his brother-in-law, Dr. Michael Hannon. Thank you for being here with us today. We would also like to extend a warm welcome to the many distinguished military and senior civilian leaders, trusted mentors, dear friends, battle buddies, and esteemed colleagues, as well as all of the non-commissioned officers, soldiers, and DOD civilians joining us here today and viewing from both near and far. Colonel Giroux and his family are honored and thank you for joining them for today's ceremony. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our host for today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Talita Crossley. Good afternoon. What an amazing day for our military. Uh, as I was sitting here listening at the introduction and I looked out, all the smiles and support just illustrate what today means to so many of us who are running. So it is an honor to be here. So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to distinguished guests, Mrs. Centennial, family, friends, and most importantly, the Gerard family. Thank you all for being here today. Um, wow. Master Keyrail, that was absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. It really was. Hi, Chaplain Meeker, thank you for your inspiring words of prayer. And to everybody who had a hand in today's event, thank you for making it and uh, a, a ceremony that honors the significance of a promotion to the rank of Brigadier General. Roger, congratulations. I am sincerely grateful to honor, to have this honor today, to host today's ceremony. Okay, let me speak to the potential women out there right now. No, I did not reach back to my New York roots and talk with my connected friends who took a bat to Lieutenant General's knee. Lieutenant General was me so that I could be here to host today's sermon. <laughs> There's absolutely no truth to that. Because if I was to do something like that, I would have just put his name on the blacklist and called my friend Ray Reddington. Because he's much more discreet. In all seriousness, I am grateful to have this on today and, and appreciate that both you and Lieutenant General Dingle asked me. Before I talk about Roger, I want to recognize the members of his family as well. As you heard today, his mother-in-law Judy's here, his brother uh, Ed, a former Navy CB, thank you for your service, his cousin, Lieutenant Colonel, retired, John Meek and his wife, Deborah, thank you for your service, and his brother-in-law Mike, thank you all for being here today. And of course, the most two most the two most important people in Roger's life, his wife Kelly and their daughter Maddie. Uh, Roger and Kelly met at the Great Place, also known as the newly renamed Fort Cavoza near Colleen, Texas. And if you can believe it, they're celebrating 24 years of marriage. Congratulations on that. So, so Kelly's a former Army physician assistant and is currently, currently working with the Veterans Evaluation Service. She's been an active member in our soldier and family readiness around the world. She's been our family rock for our balancing, being an extraordinary mother, an impactful health care provider, volunteering, and perhaps most important, demanding job of all, keeping Roger straight. Thank you, Kelly. Their daughter, Maddie. Maddie just turned 18. Happy belated birthday. And just graduated from high school as well. Uh, Maddie is headed to Colorado State University to study animal science and pursuing her veterinarian uh, degree. So, Maddie. <clears throat> so, when I asked Roger about his greatest accomplishments, he quickly said, it's his family. It's Maddie and Kelly. Uh, Maddie's not just a military brat dealing with the usual military upheavals, moving from post to post, saying goodbye to old friends, making new ones, getting used to a new school. She's had to deal with some medical issues, some significant ones, and has done so with a level of courage, grace, and determination. 
keeping on track for the high school graduation I just talked about at 18 and going to her first short college. And that's no small feat, Maddie. You've been an inspiration to many to include your parents. So thank you for what you do for our military. I know all of you are extremely proud of Roger today. He is not here without your love and your unwavering support that has made today possible. The late General Odeiro, the former Chief of Staff of the Army, always said the strength of our nation is our Army, the strength of our Army is our soldiers, and the strength of our soldiers is our families. That's what, make, that's what makes us Army strong. I would go further one step and say that our family sacrifices are so that we are able to continue to serve. Kelly, Maddie, to the Drew family, you're Roger's heroes, and we are all grateful for what you've done and for your faithful service. Thank you to the Drew family. As I, as I said earlier, it is truly an honor to host a ceremony. Promotion to the rank of general officer is rare. To be specific, Roger is one of a handful of eligible, a thousand, so it's not a handful. He is one of a thousand eligible AMED colonels. He joins the rank of approximately 230 general officers in the regular army that is comprised of over 480,000 soldiers. Those data points underscore the rare privilege and honor of promotion to the rank of general officer and the trust and faith our Army has in him. I know Roger is humbled by his selection, might even be a bit overwhelmed, but you are absolutely more than ready for this next step. As you read his bio, in his long list of duty assignments and decorations, it would be easy to miss why we are really here today, to promote him to Brigadier General. We're promoting Roger to serve as a general officer, not just because of his intellect. To be sure, he is a big brain. Roger can assimilate an incredible range, a broad range of issues, and distill them down into impactful actions that make a difference. He is simply unparalleled in that effort. We're here today not just because Roger is an unselfish teammate and a great leader from any seat on the team or because of his ability to lead up. And I know this firsthand. I experienced Roger helping mentoring a newly promoted Brigadier General, getting her, getting her to pass as an operator as she served as a Medcom G357. We're not here today because of his moral courage or his commitment to the mission and the people. We're here today because of all of it, and Roger has it all in spades. He has the character and the commitment to lead at this level and will absolutely continue to make a difference at the most strategic levels of our military. Roger, as you assume, the inherent privilege to lead at this level, never lose sight of the people who got you here. Your family, your friends, they remain part of your journey and they will continue to sacrifice so that you can continue to serve. Honor and keep them. Remember that you're never alone. You are joining new teammates, other general officers, senior listed executives, and leaders across the Department of Defense, both past and present. Finally, keep having fun, bringing the passion, the joy, and the genuine commitment you have done so well to continue to serve and make a difference with the absolute most complex issues of our department. Roger, Kelly, Maddie, congratulations. Everyone here today is so very proud. So let's get to it. Please join me. Kelly, will you please come forward and join your husband on stage, please?
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the reading of the promotion order. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and professional excellence of Roger S. Giroux. In view of these special qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore promoted in the United States Army to the rank of Brigadier General, effective the third day of May 2023, by the order of the Secretary of the Army. Please be seated. Kelly and Lieutenant General Crossland will now place the great insignia on the sh shoulder loops of Brigadier General Giroux's jacket to reflect the rank of Brigadier General. This time, I ask Madeline and Ed to please come forward. Madeline and Ed will now place the great insignia on the shoulder loops of Brigadier General Giroux's shirt. At this time, I ask Lieutenant Colonel retired John Wink to please come forward. Lieutenant Colonel Wink will now present Brigadier General Giroux with his garrison cap reflecting the rank of Brigadier General. Let's give the family a round of applause. <laughs> Lieutenant General Crossland will now present Brigadier General Giroux with a certificate of promotion.
Brigadier General Giroux has requested Lieutenant General Crossan to administer the oath of office, although not required by law. It has been a long-standing tradition that officers recite the oath of office upon promotion. Lieutenant General Crossan will now administer the oath of office to Brigadier General Giroux. Please remain seated. His family will remain in place. At this time, will Command Sergeant Major Irano Buma please come forward. In the early 20th century, the War Department initially authorized Army General boat flags for use when making official visits to naval vessels. In 1923, the authorization of flags was further expanded to include automobile flags and field office flags. Line officers had scarlet flags and staff officers normally had branch colors and branch insignia. Army Medical Corps general officer flags were marooned with white stars. In 1947, the Deputy Chief of Staff of Personnel authorized all Army general officer flags except Medical Corps and Chaplain flags to be scarlet with white stars and gold fringe, while Medical general officers kept the maroon flag with white stars. Lieutenant General Crossland and Command Sergeant Major Buma will now present Brigadier General Giroux with the Army Medical Department general officer one star flag. At this time, I ask Colonel Kenneth Lutz to please come forward. Colonel Lutz will now present Brigadier General Giroux with his General Officer Belt. The history of General Belt dates back to World War II. In 1943, the Army Chief of Staff wanted generals to look, in his words, dressed up. So he ordered the issue of belts, the thick black leather belt with an 18 karat gold plated buckle with an imprint of an eagle was first made in 1944. Today, wearing the belt is at the discretion of each general officer. At this time, I ask, I ask Colonel David Zimmerman to please come forward. Colonel Zimmerman will now present Brigadier General Giroux with his general officer sidearm, a Sig Sawyer P320 M18 pistol Serial number GO1075. Active duty general officers and promotable colonels can be issued a pistol on a loan basis. 
The pistols are procured exclusively for general officers and the serial numbers are pre prefixed with GO and are unique to one general officer. The loan of the pistol is valid until the retirement from active duty, at which time the general officer can either purchase the weapon or return it. If returned, the pistol is destroyed. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the rendering of honors. I present to you Brigadier General Roger S. Giroux. Please be seated. At this time, Brigadier General Giroux will now present flowers to his family as a token of his appreciation for the love, support, and sacrifices made in support of his career. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest general officer in the United States Army, Brigadier General Roger S. Giroux. Okay. I'm going to take, it, take a moment. Uh, HVAC system, General Dingle always talks about the HVAC system and the allergies. Pollen is heavy this time of year, so we're going to get through, we're going to get through this uh, and hopefully the HVAC system cooperates. Lieutenant General Crossland, Mr. Centineo, Major General Mrs. Rubenstein, Major General Alexander and Colonel Hurt, Major General Ferris and Colonel Weber, Mr. and Mrs. Bushman, Brigadier General McQueen, Brigadier General Mrs. Jones. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, distinguished guests, family, friends, and I think Command Sergeant Major Gregg, Command Sergeant Major Mrs. Gregg, sorry. Thank you for coming today. What an awesome day to be a soldier. What a beautiful day for a promotion ceremony here in the historic National Capital Region, right next to hallowed ground, especially as we head into Memorial Day uh, this weekend. First and foremost, I must thank God for this day and this grace. If you didn't believe in miracles, by God, you can now, as I am living proof. Likewise, I'm also a living proof that our Army is not zero defect, as most of you can attest to, uh, as some of the stories were going on at the House last night. Um, and that goes straight from my Army beginning as a cadet at Texas A&M. You can... You can ask many of my fish buddies who are right that way, uh, whom are here or on Facebook Live, uh, my lieutenant buddies from America's first team, or my fellow captains back from the days in the big red one. Duty first. They're here either because they're curious, amazed, flabbergasted, or all of the above. <laughs> Kelly, Madeline, and I want to thank each of you for taking the time to come here today or attend virtually, many from a great distance, in different time zones as far away as Australia, as I got texts from my buddy Ian Ford over there this morning. As we know, most of you have busy schedules and lives of your own, but as you in this audience and many others, soldiers, non-commissioned officers, officers, civilians, teachers, leaders, and friends that made this day possible, for me and my family. I am humbled by your presence. Special thanks to all the folks that made this event possible. Let's give Kirill another round of applause, please. <laughs> A 
I'd be remiss not to mention the G357 section, Captain Serenao, my executive assistant, Sergeant Major Buma, because nobody can pronounce your name, so we all shorten it to Buma. <laughs> the Fort Myer Memorial Chapel staff, Miss Deville, for the wonderful cake that you'll see as you, as you process that way eventually after my hour and a half speech. <laughs> Just teasing. Uh, and finally, the excellence behind it all, the phenomenal Army Medicine Executive Services and Protocol Team, the voice of Army Medicine, Mr. Greg Canty. <laughs> A fellow healthcare operations alumnus, I might add. Ms. Jane Houston, Ms. Rose Jewett, Ms. Nancy Sanchez, Mr. Adrian Morales, Ms. Heidi Pampel, Ms. Rosie Romicchio, and Mr. David Watson. All superstars who coordinated all invites, set up the site, prepared scripts, programs, and many things unseen by us all. My and my family's heartfelt thanks to all of you for making this day extra special. Please give them a round of applause. So I, I must thank, and I want to thank Lieutenant General Dingle. He, he was the host on the original invite but hopefully is watching, uh, recuperating from his surgery and listening to his doctor's orders. Uh, if you are out there virtually, I know that I'm here today in large part to you, sir. I thank you for the sage counsel, advice, and mentorship through the years. Thank you for answering my calls, even though when I call, it's not so great news most of the time. And I also thank you for not answering my call or taking my email back in 2015. I don't know if he knows this story. If he's listening, he'll hear it. If not, he may hear it later. It was right before I was graduating from the Army War College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Uh, this is when Human Resources Command was talking about assigning me for the second time back to the Office of the Surgeon General. See, I wasn't too excited about the, the uh, pros perspective of coming back. I had gotten a picture from my first tour from 10 to 11 purposely with the Pentagon in a rear view mirror of a vehicle, hoping to keep it there. <laughs> Clearly it didn't work. Um, then Colonel Promotable Dingle was coming out of command of the 30th Med Brigade in Germany and PCSing himself and family to become the MedCom G357 here in the NCR. I was convinced that I would talk him out of the assignment. He said we would talk. I'll chalk it up that he was busy with his PCS and I'm thankful that we never spoke about the topic. After all, it was one of the most rewarding assignments that I've had in 29 years of service. Lieutenant General Dingle knew best. Lieutenant General Dingle's recent misfortune with a bum knee was my fortune, as I was able to ask another phenomenal leader and mentor to host this ceremony, Lieutenant General Crossland, who, at her promotion to Lieutenant General, General Dingle described as the baddest woman in the Army. <laughs> and that's no lie. My family and I are honored and humbled that you could host our ceremony today. You are a stalwart example of what a leader should be in our military, and you demonstrate the moral courage to tackle the toughest of problems, even when it's not the popular thing to do, but the right thing to do. I have appreciated learning from you and the positive example, leadership example you set. I thank you for making time for me, the phone calls, the office calls, and certainly today. I look forward to continuing service to our nation, our military, and our military health system with you. As I look at, out at all of you, it is as if I'm seeing my, li my life flash before my eyes. No, I don't think I'm dying. It's just there's a lot of people here. <laughs> you in this audience and on Facebook Live and those that sent a note or called leading up to this are large parts of the reason why I stand here today. I see people that I grew up with, went to college with, and soldiered with. I see leaders that helped shape me and fuel my passion for learning leadership, all who, shall, who helped shape a young lieutenant, captain, major, etc., through middle-aged Roger, and plant the seeds of leadership learning. I see leaders of various ranks, from very junior soldier when I knew you, to lieutenant general in this audience, from different points in my career that have, that have helped shape and support me in good times and not so good times. I see fellow Aggies, Brigadier General Guy and Deb Jones, Colonel Dave Zimmerman, my son in the Corps, Steve Krippner, 
and some of my former fish buddies from Red Eye One or Company I One for the non Aggies in the group who I learned through shared experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly, that you are stronger together. Or as our core brass reads, per unitatum vis, through unity strength. And to be a part of something bigger than yourself is important. Important to always defend what is right and put others before self. So thanks, Ward. Thanks, Dave. Who you, I was fully expecting full-on Grizzly Adams look, so you kind of shocked me in the hallway. Uh, Joseph Lim, my, 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 old, my former old lady, and if you don't know what an old lady is, just ask them. Dave Farr, who reached out. I think he's on Facebook Live. He was my longest old lady. And James Thomas, my fish doppelganger, who together we confused upper and underclassmen alike for the four years that we were in the Corps. I may need to talk to you later. <laughs> I see many non-commissioned officers who shaped my life. My dad, his brothers, my uncles, God rest their souls, Uncle Ralph and Uncle Frank, a former Brook Army Medical Center Sergeant Major before the CSM rank came along. From my first platoon sergeant to my last Sergeant Major, Hernandez, Huffman, Robinson, Garza, Camp, La Frada, Thomas, Jackson, Moran, and Buma. From my, beginning, from my beginning of life through now, I have learned valuable lessons from these and countless numbers of non-commissioned officers. I see former bosses, former battalion commanders, Colonel Retired Larry Strobel, Colonel Retired John Fristo, former brigade commanders, Colonel Retired Bernard de Koenig, Colonel Retired Todd Heisner, Former commanding generals and other senior leaders, Brigadier General Arzone on Facebook, Major General Retired Volpe on Facebook, Mr. Greg Stevens on Facebook, Major General Retired Rubenstein, Gigum, playing Texas Aggie class of 77. I think he's the eldest Aggie here. <laughs> that's, that's an honor, not, a, not an age jab. And maybe on Facebook, Lieutenant General Scott McKean, Lieutenant General Steve Gillen, who kept me sane at the great place, and Lieutenant General Nadia West, a shining example of humanity and leading with empathy. All these that I worked for. Many mentors who provided me counsel along the way. You provided me positive examples of what a soldier, a statesman, and a knightly gentleman should be. I thank all of you for, for that and the support you've given Team Jero. I see a lot of folks who could not be here today. Some distance is a factor and have passed words of encouragement. Some who have gone on to their heavenly reward, like Sergeant Major Johnny Salazar, a high school instructor. Colonel Brian Allgood, who I had the opportunity to work for in Korea during my first tour. Two people that inspired me in this life lie in rest just behind us, not too far, in these sacred grounds of Arlington National Cemetery. When I was a second lieutenant at the officer basic course down at Fort Sam, my first duty assignment was the 1st Cavalry Division at, at then Fort Hood, now Fort Cavazos. And I had to reach out to the chief of the Division Medical Operations Center, a then Major Gail Long, for whatever my assignment was going to be in that, in that division. Now, my buddy got to her first, so he went to 1-7 Cav, I got, I got 112 Cav. It all worked out. I'd later work for her twice thereafter. She was probably the first mentor that I had in the Army, the HVAC, Pollen. Lieutenant Colonel Gail Long took the time to always listen and provide counsel up until a month before she succumbed to cancer in November of 06. She got that she was part of something bigger than herself. Likewise, from the day I was born, or at least the day I was baptized, my uncle and godfather, Uncle Walter, Colonel retired Walter Rink was there, occasionally with his presence because he lived in Florida and everybody knows I grew up in San Antonio and I'll, I'll describe the dirt on the floor here in a minute. Um, but always through letters and phone calls when I was growing up, always encouraging me, always remaining positive, inspiring me to become someone of good character, the someone who I should strive to be, right? also class of 42, uh, Texas A&M. All these people, these leaders, saw something in me that I did not see in myself. I am thankful that his son today could be a part of this ceremony. Thanks, John. If there's ever a point I get choked up, so where the HVAC is really going to kick in here, is when I talk about my family. Right? So I thank my parents. Uh -oh. 
<laughs> my dad, who, as the Marine hymn goes, is guarding the streets on heaven's scenes, right? Currently, my mom, no doubt, still supporting him, nagging him up there, trying to keep him straight. A lot of sacrifice on their part and tough love. I must thank my mother-in-law, Judy, both Judy and Bill, my father-in-law, who's also watching from above, have supported Kelly, Madeline, and I in moving to and from overseas and literally across this great nation of ours countless times. I do not know how we would have done, done it without you. My brothers and sister, as you can tell, they're older, much older, right, Ed? <laughs> I know my sister, Barbara, hopefully has figured out Facebook. I talked to her back in the family room before. If not, it'll be on Facebook. Um, our brother Richard, watching from the heavens, they've always been interested in their little brother. Special thanks to Ed for making the trek from Everett, Washington. I thank you for being with me during those special times in my life. It means a lot. Even driving with me on our little adventure post my retinal detachment this summer in the surgery as I was one-eyed going from Fort, what now is Fort Cavazos up to here to get to this assignment. Okay, HVAC, don't fail me now. <laughs> to my daughter, Maddie, there were a lot of people whom I thought were my heroes. My dad, former bosses, I'm not going to mention any names because there's too many of you in this room, so without, I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, historical fi figures, even Mike Smith for writing the MedOps handbook. But <laughs> not, not, not much after that, though, Mike. Just saying. <laughs> It took me 51 years of my life to realize that my hero is you. Six different elementary and middle, middle schools, two high schools, thanks to the wisdom of General Gilland asking me to stay another year in Korea, or it would have been three at least. Her high school experience shaped by COVID-19, and on 13 October of 2020, a diagnosis of a brainstem tumor, low-grade ganglioglioma for our medical types that would shape all of our lives, especially hers. The grit, the resilience, the strength, and the determination like no other. And she was going through proton radiation therapy at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. And Kelly and I would take turns every morning for two months to get her to the radiation center at 6 a.m. That's when she wanted to be there, the first patient there every morning. Get in, get out. I stood there then and continue to stand in awe today of an amazing young woman who is a warrior. Please give a round of applause for me. So thank you, Maddie, for sharing your dad and allowing me and pushing me to pursue my love for soldiering. She just graduated from high school, as General Crossland mentioned, on Saturday, and will head off to Colorado State University in the fall, and probably many, many more allergy and air-conditioned moments to come. To Kelly, thank you for listening to me. The skill that you remind me often, as recently as last night, that I don't do too well with. <laughs> there was witnesses, so you can ask them. Uh, supporting me and being the best mother Madeline could ask for and being my best friend. Thanks for seeing this journey through and sticking by me. Thank you for encouraging me. Weaker folks would have quit a long time ago. I would not be here without you. To whom much is given, much is expected. The Army has provided a lot for Team Giroux, from my schooling to part of Kelly's. I owe the Army a lot, and I can't think of a better way to give back than through Army and military medicine. From my being born at Brook Army Medical Center, the old one, not the new one, to my cousin John Wink, helping me being assessed into the Army Medical Department a couple of years back, to all the things Army and military medicine does from the foxhole to the roll four. It is, in my opinion, the most noble part of the profession of arms. I remain committed to what we are for, conserving the fighting strength. These are not just words. As many as a couple of you have told me in this, in the, that are sitting in this audience, words mean things. Words mean things. And I clearly understand the oath of office that I took again today. Before taking battalion command a few years back, Lieutenant General, now retired, Dave Hogue, my former battalion XO and 112 cab, my first assignment, told me, remember, you're appointed, not anointed. 
It is my honor to continue to humbly serve the greatest soldiers, service members, civilians, and our families on the planet. Again, to all, thanks for being here today. It means the world to Team Jarrell. Appreciate it. Thank you. Surgeon General would call this a uh, Omaha. I'll just call it a Frago. I forgot. Please see, sit. I forgot to, under, to explain why the dirt on the floor. Um, I have been promoted, uh, and some of you were there at one promotion where something similar occurred, uh, on Texas soil for every promotion in, in this career. Um, so from second lieutenant, certainly commissioned to Texas A&M, first lieutenant, captain at Hood, uh, at now Cavazos Major at Fort Sam Houston. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel was technically in Balad, Iraq, but somehow some Texas soil made it in through the wacky agricultural rules. Uh, and so I stood on Texas soil in Balad, Iraq. Colonel uh, in the front of the Alamo, uh, some of the most sacred soil uh, to, uh, for our state. And so thus, there are some Alamo soil and then there's some soil from our property out in the hill country. That, uh, that will have to be swept up later today. So that, that, is, uh, that is why the Texas soil, that's why there's dirt on the ground. So, all right. Sir, I'm glad you explained that so people wouldn't think I was responsible for that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the benediction by Chaplain Meeker and remain standing for the playing of the Army song. The words are printed on the program so that you are able to follow along. At the conclusion of the Army Song, please remain standing for the departure of the official party and family. Once the family has departed, please remain in place until a protocol representative comes to your room. Receive the benediction. May the God of peace grant you shalom always and in all places. May God grant you good health and help you to help others have good health and be strong of body, mind, and spirit. May God grant you a life filled with those who you, whom you love and cherish. And may we all be committed to the cause of freedom each and every day. I pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be blessed, Army Medicine. You are cordially invited to congratulate Brigadier General Giroux and his family and stay for cake and light refreshments at the adjacent fellowship hall immediately following the receiving line. Thank you for attending today's ceremony. Have a great and wonderful Memorial Day weekend.